you're the one who has to come in and work on the painting and, and create that breath and create your art and make it alive. Because as soon as you walk away, it stops breathing and it's, you know, it, it won't move on its, on its own. So it's kind of like bringing it to life, which is interesting. Hey guys, how is everybody doing? This is Andrew Gable here coming to you from my painting studio. And I've been working on this painting and I thought I'd do another update. So maybe I'll just start by talking a little bit about how I actually go about creating a painting like this. Uh, because I don't use photo references. Um, I mean, I use, a, I use a few photo references, but I... At this stage where I'm at right now, I prefer to test my ability um, or applications where I'm not necessarily using a photo reference even as a, especially as a starting point. You know, and the reason I do that is because I find that while I paint the figures, I have enough of an understanding and enough of a knowledge of what a figure looks like that I can get figures to look like somewhat okay in a space without using a reference. And then once I have them kind of placed and positioned, then I will use references. Then I will find a reference, for instance, like I found a reference just for the shape of the hand, once I sort of had the hand in place already, and then I'll sort of define it a little more specifically. The reason I don't necessarily start with a photo reference is because there's a kind of searching that happens as I'm initially painting the figures where I'm trying to find the position of the forms on the canvas and that process makes for um, it, it sort of creates an environment or an opportunity for paint to start interacting with itself and mixing and and different um, effects to start happening and emerging so that process of like trying to f of finding the forms of the figures actually starts creating the environment that the figures are going to be in and starts creating the color uh, the color scheme. And the same with the background actually like you know I have a basic understanding of, of certain forms um, like a leaf form or a rock form or a tree form. Um, usually my backgrounds are organic uh, organic environments and you know, one of the questions I have and I'm answering within the painting process is what, is it, what does it mean to paint from the inside out, right? So using a reference like you're going to the outside looking for a reference and then you're painting it. And I have this idea, I'm like, well, where does this nature come from in the first place, right? Like it, it's sort of born out of life and I'm life, so don't I have this inside me already? So that's why I prefer or I'm exploring this approach of not necessarily using that many photo references but pushing myself to understand how to bring and pull forms out of myself. Um, and you know I have a specific mark, a specific signature um, and every person and every artist does that's just natural to them. It's like it's kind of their essence and so I'm kind of building on that idea and you know I have enough basic forms like a leaf shape or you know like even a circle or a square or a triangle and it's like I'm essentially applying the law of time which is you're, you're continuing to show up and paint on the canvas and paint on the painting and within that process things start emerging almost as a side effect. Um, you, it's like you're not even necessarily painting the things in themselves, but lots of like, you call them accidents, but it's like forms start to sort of emerge naturally. Um, and then I'll use like the, the more basic shapes that I understand, like a leaf shape or a vine or a tree or something. And within painting those forms, other things happen. So that's kind of, that's kind of how I've gone about painting um, the background and honestly the background has been one of the more challenging uh, dimensions for me to sort of understand how to um, paint 
I've, I've sort of been developing the figure for a lot of years and that part of it has sort of been ahead of the game, but I've always sort of not really known how to effectively int you know, integrate figures with the background and find something that I guess complements the figures, but it's more like I'm trying to find a painting process that I enjoy doing. And so that's why I'm a little reluctant to move into photo references because I find as soon as I have a photo, it's like, yes, there's a structure there, but then it's like I'm, I'm tethered to that structure almost. Um, I feel restricted and it's hard to break away from the photo and then just be on your painting and focus on your painting and what's happening right in front of your face. Things happen on the canvas right on the tip of your brush that doesn't happen in photos. It's like you're not copying anything. It's like you're observing um, how the paint mixes. And I, I find that natural chemical reaction that happens and the effects that happen naturally with the paint just mixing um, is something that's interesting to me. So, um, so yes, I understand paintings or photographs are great for structure, but it's, it's something that I'm still developing, uh, that relationship w with my painting specifically of how to effectively use photo references. And I'm not saying I'm not going to use them. In fact, you know, it could be a cool exercise for me to use them and, you know, and I do use them. Like for instance, I drew in my sketchbook, I was just drawing, I was using photos and I was drawing figures, you know, and I was representing all the muscles and I was, and, and I was kind of figuring out, like learning more about anatomy, but in, in my sketchbook, just as an exercise. And then when I come here, it's like, then I can reference what I remember. So it's like, I want, I'm building up that knowledge if you want. I'm also okay with, with abst abstraction in the figure and it's not maybe gonna look exactly like a, a human being. Like I'm okay for distortions and such um, to occur as long as I get it, if, if they feel good to me. Like sometimes you just look at something in your painting and something just feels weird about it. Then you just change it or you try and find it, you know, to work with it until it, until it fits. Um, so that's really what's been going on with this painting. Honestly, it's been pretty cool and I think I've learned a lot um, just in terms of how to how to build that background. I think that's really started coming through in this particular painting um, where I just started, really I just started like moving around, doing squiggles, like just doing anything in the background to just start building any kind of reality back there. And what happened is you know, things started emerging and a space started to happen and then I could maybe bring in some more um, complete forms like, you know, a flower form or something. And, you know, this, I don't think you can see this, but there's this yellow kind of abstract shape in the back, which I was really excited about. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how the next one will go. But anyways, this has been an experience or a experiment with painting something joyous. I think I might title it like joy or something like that. It's an interesting conversation too, like when is something positive and when is something negative? Because I was looking at the point of, you know, if this was two people fighting, which I think would be really cool, in the same color scheme, you know, these pinks and bright colors, it would be interpreted as negative because of the the physic, like the geometry or the symbolism, um, like the line, it would be describing two people fighting. And I think that would be more dominant than the colors. I think the colors would, are secondary. I think the structure, especially when you're dealing with like a realistic forms, um, dominates, you know, and, you know, and I think what if, and even, what about this? What if you had two people fighting, but you had the words love written, like kind of on the painting too, because that's another like um, structure, like language. And I find anytime you put a word in a painting, it, it, it dominates over the, the image in a way, like it, it shapes the image. Um, 
yeah, okay, they're probably like shaping them like each other. You know, there's a relationship happening between the two. But anyways, those are just interesting things to think about. I don't necessarily, I'm not going to put any text in this one, maybe in another one. I'm not, I've tried it, but, and that's what I noticed. Text is very powerful in paintings. Um, but what makes something negative? What makes something positive? You know, people's, I was thinking people's lives, like, you're on planet Earth, man. You're a human being and you're alive. Like, that is, it's not just like roses and sunshine. Life is challenging. Life is challenging. It doesn't matter if, if you have a good life or a bad life. Like, even a good life is, is a challenging thing to be in this physical reality and be in a physical body and like, you know, getting up in the morning and having to get up and make decisions and do stuff. Like, it's challenging. I don't think, you know, negative paintings are bad. I don't think positive paintings are good. I think maybe you just explore both. Honestly, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm, that's what I'm doing here on earth, right? <laughs> just figuring it out. So, and in the studio also, like that's, that's, you know, I can paint different things and, and see what works and, and learn about the process. One thing I found fascinating was that whether I'm painting a positive image or a negative image per se, my experience is actually exactly the same, which is fascinating. Like I'm, for the most part, when I get into a good flow, whether I'm painting like something considered negative or something considered positive, my experience is the same. I'm, you know, I can find I just enjoy the process of painting. Um, which is really, I think, important for sure. And I, that's something that I'm trying to do for myself. Like I'm trying to create a style of painting where I'm having fun, like where I'm enjoying myself because I don't want to be a slave to, to my artwork. Like I don't want to create something that I'm going to feel like I'm trapped or stuck in. So, you know, it's like I'm exploring and testing different ways, something that's natural and fun and interesting to me. This week was crazy. Like I had so much resistance to coming in here and I had to, you know, with these works, I'm, I'm essentially developing a series of paintings, at least I'd like to think so, an issue for me over the years. I've kind of like threw myself into my art, especially in my early years and completely ignored making money to the point of my detriment. Like I ran out of money completely. Um, whoops. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's it's something that I'm aware of as I'm moving into these paintings to make sure that I keep the carving flow going. But this last week has been really interesting because as much as I'm enjoying the painting process, especially once I get in here, that's the key. Once I get through that initial wall of resistance, it's like you literally, it's like you have to walk through this moment of discomfort walk through as you walk through the door or make that decision it's like a decision you're making and you're walking through this wall of resistance i found the wall is not that thick you know it's thin and i once i get through it and i'm painting it, it dissipates pretty quickly and i'm enjoying myself but you know i've so with this one i've just been finding an hour here two hours there you know whether in the morning or in the evening and just pushing for that point of consistency of just, you know, working with my reality while I continue to spend the bulk of my time creating my sculptures to make sure that point is flowing. I have to build this up on the side, so I have to find time to do it. And um, so that's been the process. And, it, and it, this week's been interesting facing that resistance each time I wanted to come in here. It's like, oh, I'm painting a positive painting. Well, that doesn't mean I'm going to want to paint, which is really interesting. It's like you still, it doesn't really matter what you do. You still have to walk through that process of actually creating something in physical reality. And I don't think it really matters what it is. It's, it's like you have to, you're going to face resistance, you know? Um, so that's been a sobering, I'm not going to say wake up call. Cause I, you know, I, I've been doing this long enough to know that that's usually part of the process. It's like you have to physically walk through some resistance sometimes. And, um, but I am happy to report that the wall of resistance is 
somewhat thin at this stage. So once I get through it and get in here, it's okay. And I hope I'm, I'm already afraid of the words I'm speaking because I'm thinking, what if next week the wall is thicker? Oh my God. Part of the process too is like getting through your emotional hangups and your back chat which is the inner thoughts that prevent you from getting in here and, and painting and anyways that's a artist reflection video on this piece right here which I could honestly walk away and call this piece done and it looks done but you know I've just been coming in here and I've been enjoying just finding a spot sitting down and just like focusing on that area and painting it and uh some areas are working pretty cool and some areas could use a little work and it's just kind of the push and pull. A painting is alive, you know, like a painting breathes where you go into the work and you start creating. It's almost like a breath, right? And then it's almost like you call it destroying, like you're creating and moving and building and then you're taking away and kind of destroying and reducing and pulling it back. And then you're creating more and you're like changing and something else happens and then it kind of like slows down and like then you're you're sort of just no I don't want to say destroy but it's like this out breath in breath process um, but I think ultimately you, if you know it's like you have to you're the one who has to come in and work on the painting and and create that breath and create your art and make it alive because as soon as you walk away it stops breathing and it's you know it, it won't move on its on its own so it's kind of like bringing it to life which is interesting um okay so that's it for today thanks everybody thanks for watching